What's going on guys? It's Omniarch and today I'm bringing you a brand new video where I'm going to be giving you my guide to Julius Caesar in Rise of Kingdoms. Now real quick before we jump into it i just have to put a disclaimer out there a couple of videos ago when i talked about what happened in my kvk i mentioned at the end that i would not be leaving kingdom 1568 and as you can see on the screen here i did migrate to 1643 today i'll talk about that more at the end of the video because i think some of you may be interested in that but i think most of you probably aren't with that being said let's jump into the guide for caesar julius caesar is a commander that i've gotten a lot of requests for a guide on and i think it's because new players when they first see that julius caesar is in the game they recognize the name they know him from in real life as a famous legendary commander in 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 history and and so a lot of players are probably curious to know if he's good in rise of kingdoms and that's why they asked me for a guide so if you guys don't know julius caesar you can get him from gold keys you can get him from the first ever mightiest governor you can get him from the daily special offer as long as you've expertise to the commanders that come prior to him so it's out martel el cid all those guys uh, and you also can eventually get him from card king although i don't recommend getting him from that i don't think that he's the best commander to spend your gems on regardless um julius caesar is a legendary commander with the leadership conquering and attack trees which means that he is essentially a legendary version of our friend over here scipio africanus uh same talent trees and very similar uses uh in, in both the open fields and in rallying cities which you know spoiler alert uh that is going to be caesar's uh where he shines in the early game and then later down the line he starts to fall off a bit uh and his role kind of shifts from rallying cities to kind of a sunset canyon which we'll talk about in a little bit but since he doesn't have a talent tree for a specific troop type we have to dive into his skills to figure out what exactly julius caesar is going to do best so his first skill is called indomitable army i don't know if i pronounced that right it's an active skill with a rage requirement of 1000 and it says for the next five seconds increase troops attack and defense by 20 percent and increases all damage by 30 percent so for five seconds which is a significant amount of time in this game a lot of times you see other buffs that are two seconds maybe three seconds so five seconds is pretty long for a buff of this caliber um he's getting 40 percent of extra stats no matter what the troop type is which is amazing and he's elevating your damage by 30 percent which applies to all damage right all damage normal attack counter attack uh skill damage even which is insane and it's worth noting that you know after that five seconds if your secondary has a big skill damage it's going to hit during that 30 percent damage bonus which is incredibly good this skill is worth getting to five before you bring him any farther so leave him at one star get this to five and then bring him to two stars where you're going to get his second skill to five and it's called divine julius this says reduces damage taken by caesar's troops by 10 percent cool just straight up 10 percent damage reduction across the board then when caesar's army has been reduced by uh reduced to 60 percent or less he has a 10 percent chance to further reduce damage taken by 30 percent for the next three seconds whenever his troops are attacked this effect can only be triggered once every five seconds so this is an interesting second skill again i do recommend getting this to five before bringing him to four stars essentially what this is doing is adding a nice amount of tankiness to whatever army that julius caesar is a part of now we can compare this to richard the first second skill uh richard the first also gives you a damage taken reduction but it's up to 15 percent however instead of further giving more damage reduction he is giving you counter a counter attack damage bonus of 10 percent i personally think that's a little bit better the reason that this skill is is not that great is because the extra damage reduction is only applied under 60 percent and if you're using caesar in the open field typically you're not going to want to use him for too long under that 60 percent mark so uh the second part of the skill really is not going to get that much usage unless you know that caesar is going to go out in the open field and you're going to use him until he's done which is not a great strategy because you're gonna have a pretty big hospital bill if you do that however it's worth noting that this is amazing in sunset canyon where he will be drained down to zero every single time so he's great for sunset canyon for that reason and it's also worth noting that it has a 10 percent chance to pop off whenever he's attacked which means that if he's surrounded and he's swarmed this is this is a, has a higher percent chance of popping off but 
it does have a cooldown so it's kind of like they they give a little bit and then they take it away with that cooldown so it's kind of frustrating that that cooldown is there because i think this would be uh he would be much better if that cooldown wasn't there and it would give you an incentive to leave him in the open field until he dies um maybe i don't know um but because there's a cooldown there and because you're not really going to use him that much under 60 percent if you can help it uh it makes this skill decent for tankiness but could be a little bit better and again i think richard's second skill is a testament to that i think his second skill is a little bit better um and they're both late game commanders so it's not like we're comparing him to a newer commander with that being said let's talk about his third skill it's called city killer which is very straightforward it says caesar has a 10 percent chance to reduce enemy defense by 30 percent per turn when attacking other governor cities last for three seconds so one turn in this game roughly lasts for a second which means that it's 30 percent per turn roughly so the first turn that this goes off it reduces their defense by 30 percent then the second turn it will reduce it by another 30 percent which is a total of 60 and the third turn it will release it will uh, reduce it by another 30 percent for a total of 90 percent defense reduction this is insane what makes this so good is that um again 90 percent huge debuff but uh the secondary commander to julius caesar assuming he's primary uh will if they have a big skill damage it's gonna hit during that massive defense reduction which is amazing if it lines up with this first skill you're you're looking at an amazing amount of skill damage from that secondary commander somebody like Yi song ye for example would be crazy good in this scenario what makes this third skill not so great is that it only works on cities so it doesn't work in flags forts uh passes anything like that it's only when you're attacking governor cities and so the problem with julius caesar and this is where we start to run into the issue with him is that um his second skill isn't as good as it could be in my opinion and his third skill is only applying to people who are attacking cities and you know in the early game julius caesar is incredible for that right however are you gonna have an expertise julius caesar in the early game probably not unless you're a heavy spender and in late game uh you, you probably have better options than julius caesar right and so that's where we start to run into some trouble with him uh let's look at his fourth skill before we continue to evaluate evaluate his fourth skill is called the founders and it literally just increases maximum troop capacity just like the fourth skill on scipio for example scipio only gives you 10 percent troop capacity suits a caesar gives you 15 which means it's 50 percent better which is amazing and that's why he's a legendary his expertise is not that exciting to me essentially it does the exact same thing except before it applies that buff it will uh deal a, a damage factor of 400 to that one target so a nice little damage factor not the greatest uh, expertise in the world but it is what it is so we can see he applies a really powerful buff to your army he also is pretty tanky and if you're in the early game or maybe even maybe even season, season two of kvk uh he's incredible for hitting cities uh with that third skill only if you are strong enough to lead a city rally now let's look at some of his talent builds um actually i'm going to show you guys the talents using scipio because again they have the same in talent trees keep in mind my scipio is level 58 so um you can add two talent points to whatever build we have this is an open field build that i think is incredible for julius caesar and scipio um the last two talent points one of them should obviously go into strategic prowess um because it's just great for that defense um buff but uh, the last skill point or talent point you could put really anywhere you could put it in unyielding or you can give him half a percent of health or attack if you want to go here it's whatever you want to do um for that last point it's not a huge difference wherever it goes but this is really the only open field build that i can recommend for caesar um you're getting effortless here which is amazing you're getting lord of war which is a great attack buff and you're getting burning blood along with hidden wrath both of which deal or uh, give an additional six rage every time the commander is attacked and this is why you should never swarm any commander with the attack tree because they almost always will have burning blood and in caesar's case he also has hidden wrath so if you swarm a caesar he's going to get a ton of extra rage and that's not going to turn out so good for you because as we talked about his buff is incredibly powerful and that means with more rage he's going to get that buff more often and that's not good for you so this is really the best build that i think is possible for julius caesar in the open field um it's worth noting that martial mastery is only good if your secondary does not do skill damage if your secondary does do skill damage you can take these four points and you can either move them over here to grab fight to the death but you will take a little bit more or you could put some points into unyielding if you want that counter attack damage if whatever you want to do at that point uh just don't put your points into name of the king because this is only for rallying and well, again this is an open field build 
if you are a very heavy spender and it is the early game and you're going to use them for hitting cities this is a build that i can recommend um this literally just goes to the end of the conquering tree because meteor shower is very very good you also get tier of blessing which means 10 percent of your deads will be actually severely wounded which means which is roughly 200,000 troops a little bit more than that and that's very substantial right that's very good very very good talent here um if you're going to be rallying a city with the purpose of taking uh resources then you actually would probably want to take uh maybe these points away these four points here and put them into well provisioned because it's just going to increase your troop load and that means that your uh, alliance members are going to be able to carry more resources back from that city rally so keep that in mind that's very good to grab as well now again remember if you're going to build this way i do have two more points that you would get if you're level 60 which i would put both into hidden wrath again for the same reason that we have it in the open field build if you rally a city and they swarm you then boom you're getting more rage which is amazing um you could also move these points over to here for fresh recruits to bring more troops or you could just reinforce the rally so i honestly think that hidden wrath is a better choice but keep in mind that's also something you could technically do um, these are really the best two builds in my opinion for julius caesar this is only relevant if you're hitting cities and you should only do that if it's early game and you're a bit heavy spender most players are going to want a build similar to this one for the open field now it's worth noting that julius caesar is most of the time going to be a secondary commander and we're going to talk about some of the pairings now and this is where we start to really see that julius caesar is not an s class legendary commander he's not even an a class legendary commander um he's good he's just not great and so what that means is that you know because he doesn't care about a specific troop type and he's giving you a big buff with damage uh reduction damage taken reduction um he can kind of fit in anywhere right um with that being said he is a great secondary to pretty much every infantry commander in the game because infantry already care about being tanky right and he's giving them a really solid buff and he's gonna bring more troops so the more infantry troops that you have the better that your infantry army is going to do so some incredible examples of this are going to be richard the first primary with julius caesar secondary or you could do martel primary or you could do alexander primary or you could also do a constantine primary as well these are all great choices if you're going to do that um, for all of these examples you would want to go full infantry tree and then branch off into whatever their blue tree is so for Constantine you're going to want to come over here and grab um, grab rejuvenate that's gonna give you the rage regeneration that Caesar does not have Right? and again if we look at caesar's skills um he's really only doing two things he's doing those two things pretty well but he's not regenerating any rage there's no rage in here there's no shield in here there's no healing in here uh that's he's literally just doing a big buff and damage taken reduction and bringing more troops right that's all he can do in the open field and so because of that he's missing the rage regen and he's missing some extra features that that are common for tanks again shield healing things like that and so if you pair him the reason that you want him secondary is because you want that attack tree which is amazing uh, and that attack tree again richard martel alexander constantine and the um the second the blue talent tree on all those commanders which it varies right so for these two it's the defense tree you would want to go in there uh, as the as the second tree to branch into and alexander's a nice pairing because he still has the attack tree which means if he gets swarmed He's still getting the benefit of um of burning blood which is amazing uh and again we talked about caesar's second skill popping off more often when he swarmed so there's nice synergy with uh richard with martel with alex and with constantine all infantry commanders now let's think about this for a second if you have those four where does caesar fit in he kind of doesn't right he kind of doesn't because you can do uh for example you can do an alex primary richard secondary and then you can do a martel primary with constantine secondary or vice versa right and there you have two incredible infantry armies whereas if you replace one of those secondaries with caesar um he's not really maximizing the benefit of full infantry he's just adding some tank and a big buff so those are great pairings right they're great pairings for caesar however there's an opportunity cost you could be using somebody other than caesar that may be better and whether or not you use caesar as a secondary to one of the four commanders we just talked about depends on what commanders you personally have invested in already so essentially what i'm saying is if you have let's say richard and martel you can send them out as your primary infantry army and then your secondary infantry army if you choose to send one out then caesar's probably a good option in that army uh, 
uh, for your less powerful infantry, right? Uh, because he's kind of a, a placeholder that is decent. He's just not the best. And so you want to maximize that first army and then Caesar can come in and, and really help out that second army where you don't have a better choice for that secondary slot. Let's talk about some other commander pairings that you could do besides infantry. Now, one that is famous in the early game is in fact, uh, Hannibal Barca. Now this is another pay to win commander basically because you have to have a very high VIP level in the early game to even get Hannibal Barca because you have to buy him from the VIP chests. Um, however, they are both very good together for hitting cities in KVK season one. This is insanely good. Um, you can even, you know, maybe counter rally, but probably not because you really want to hit cities with Caesar. But regardless, um, again, Barca primary or secondary doesn't really matter. They have the same trees pretty much. Um, you want to put Caesar actually Caesar primary might be slightly better because then you get the damage buff for when Barca's uh, expertise damage factor goes off. It's only a slight difference so you could pair him with barca this is in this is probably the best pairing honestly uh, in the early game for sure um but it's just a very generic army that you can send out with a ton of troops you could also pair caesar as secondary to ethelfled she has the support tree which will give you the rage regeneration that caesar is missing and she's dealing the damage that caesar is not doing right and that's an issue that you run into if you have caesar and richard or caesar and martel they're very tanky but not going to deal much damage so with that uh, you could pair him with ethel fled and that's going to be a decent pairing as well neither of them care about troop type it's also worth noting that you could do a caesar primary isong a secondary and this is the first time that we're discussing caesar as primary right i guess kind of with barca but um for this pairing you definitely want caesar primary uh, this is a decent pairing um the thing is you know isong is is bringing the damage that caesar is lacking right he's got the amazing aoe and that's just another reason why if caesar gets swarmed this is going to absolutely melt this is also going to hit during that uh damage uh buff that caesar has on his primary skill which is great um if caesar's uh what was it third skill goes off during a city rally with isong then it's deadly um because isong's skill attack is going to hit during that 90 percent or i think 60 percent defense reduction i don't know exactly the second or third uh turn timing on that precisely but um there's there's some synergy here right there's some synergy uh there's only a little bit of archer preference with isong so you can kind of ignore that but he does have the rage regeneration that caesar is missing as well with this second skill so that's great um so you're seeing you know isong is patching up the holes in caesar's flaws with the rage regen the damage it's it's great right circular aoe isong is amazing um the downside is that you know he cares a little bit about archers and this active skill damage increased by 50 percent is not going to apply to caesar whatsoever which is why he's also secondary because the skill tree will not really apply to caesar either um and so caesar primary isong secondary is an option uh, it's just maybe not the greatest option uh, that you could do um you also you know you could talk about maybe even um saladin right you could do saladin as a primary uh, and a caesar secondary and the reason saladin is primary is because you're going to do full calves with this army so you want the full cap tree and the support tree is going to give that rage generation that caesar is missing now while this pairing is something you could do again caesar is an opportunity cost right you could instead of caesar have genghis khan or minamoto or Cao Cao. those are all better options so this would be a pairing you could do but i don't really know why you would uh again that's the same reason with the with the infantry commanders we talked about before now it's also worth noting that Nenmed is an option that you could do it's not a great option it's in fact even worse than Esong. but you could do a caesar primary Nenmed secondary this skill attack is going to hit during the debuff uh, or during the damage increase on caesar's primary um this is something you could hit cities with in fact but again you know it, it's it's hard to recommend because that's really only going to be good for the early game and the skill damage bonus doesn't apply to caesar you're gonna bring a ton of troops though which is gonna be really savage um and you know you're having some med secondary because again skill tree you don't want that for for caesar he's not gonna benefit from that really at all so for the same reason you could use esong you could use Mehmed. i just think esong is better but if you're getting a city maybe med unless you're gonna get swarmed then maybe song i don't know let's talk about epic commander pairings right because i think that if you're free to play that may be something that you're asking about um sun tzu primary uh i'm sorry sun tzu primary uh, julius caesar secondary decent build for the same reason that the legendary um infantry commanders are so you would do full infantry on sun tzu with the rest in the skill tree the problem with this is that again skill tree for caesar is not that great uh, but you do have the rage regeneration that caesar is missing you do have a little bit of extra tankiness 
and you do have the aoe the damage that caesar is missing as well so this is a decent pairing if you want a more tanky sun tzu that's something that you could do uh, you could pair him with scipio as well scipio primary richard secondary only because it's less experienced to get scipio to 60. um they're really just going to be ultra tanky in the open fields just super super tanky bringing a ton of troops they're going to suffer from the same issue that richard and martel have though in that they're not going to really deal that much damage um, but it is worth noting that scipio does have some healing that that caesar's missing so you know it's decent it's tanky is it going to deal a lot of damage no uh so it's it's a pairing you could do but it's it's just it's lacking in that area a commander that i do like a pairing with though is joan of arc so you could either do joan of arc primary or secondary if you do a primary you want to go all the way into the support tree for the rejuvenate to regeneration of rage that caesar is missing she also has an insanely powerful buff and having caesar secondary is going to add some tankiness to her to keep her alive in the open fields she also is doing some healing that caesar is lacking so she's kind of again with the rage regen with the healing she's doing a, a lot of she's filling a lot of caesar's holes she also has some normal attack damage buff which is going to deal a little bit extra damage that caesar is missing not a ton but it's worth noting um this is going to be more of a support build out in the open field if you do richer i'm sorry if you do caesar primary uh and joan of arc secondary what that's going to do is it's going to prevent you really from getting swarmed and targeted as much um but you miss the you lose that uh massive rage regeneration from a juvenile so you can do either one it's up to you it's up to the scenario if you don't think you're at high risk joan of arc primary is probably better if you do think you're at high risk of being targeted julius caesar is probably better um if you're in the early game very early game kvk1 or early earlier uh then you could do a boudica secondary uh the reason this for this is the skill tree again um however caesar primary boudica secondary for the same kind of reason that you would have joan of arc secondary she is applying a nice debuff she is regenerating rage she is you know doing a little bit of healing as well which is nice and so she's filling in some of the holes again that caesar has but we already made a video about boudica as to why she kind of falls off in the late game so make sure you guys go check that out and finally uh, i want to talk about ulji mundok you could do ulji primary caesar secondary for the same reason that you would do alexander primary season caesar secondary full infantry build and then go into the attack tree to get that burning blood uh and this is going to be a decent more of like a secondary infantry army if you wanted to do that so for example if your sun Tzu and ethel flood are paired together then you could do ulji caesar and that would be a nice uh nice combo um sun Tzu primary is probably better than ulji but again sun Tzu is probably better off being paired with somebody else other than caesar so with that being said those are all the commanders that i think have some nice synergy with caesar if i didn't talk about the commander here then i probably don't think that they're a great option maybe charlemagne i've seen people use Wu and caesar to defend those are things that you could do maybe i don't know the the biggest ones though are the ones that we talked about in this video those are the ones that you're most likely going to be using caesar with with that being said i don't think he is incredible for using your universals on him don't use your universal commander sculptures on julius caesar just get him from the gold keys if you get lucky and he gets to 5511 you probably can find a use for him as free to play otherwise he's not really somebody that you should really be focusing on in my opinion normally i would talk about equipment in this portion but as you can see the commander pairings for this uh, commander with julius caesar he's mostly going to be secondary so equipment does not matter on the secondary and so nine times out of ten you don't really need to worry about caesar's equipment and for that reason i'm not going to cover it here so with that being said let's talk about why i migrated because i've already gotten some questions in my dms on rise of kingdoms as to why i migrated after saying i wasn't going to in my kvk video i discussed not migrating and at that time i had no intentions of migrating i did not think i was going to and the reason for that is because I, it was my understanding that leadership in my alliance in leo uh, was going to remain that people were not leaving despite losing right we already talked about hey we're we're losing here uh, who's gonna migrate and at that at that time it seemed that everybody in leadership was staying which meant i was cool with staying as well a couple of days later i found out that there were some pretty severe issues with uh with the leadership in leo so, um there's always two sides to every story it's not worth getting into that it doesn't even matter right it doesn't even matter at the end of the day a small group of players that i really enjoy playing with uh and, and the reason that i migrated to 50 and 68 in the in the first place uh they decided that it was better for them to leave and i spent about two days trying to convince them that you know it might be better to wait until after the next kvk at least just to see if we can fix these leadership issues and you know i was kind of outnumbered with the with the number of people who would rather leave than than and then try to 
to fix it uh because they just felt that it wasn't something that that they could fix and you know it is what it is it's unfortunate i hate migrating uh because you have to start over with resources you have to start over with getting to know players however kingdom 1643 is where i am now and there's actually a ton of people here that i've already played with in the past from my original kingdom in, in uh 1062 so there's a lot of familiar faces here and i'm very happy to be playing amongst them 1568 is still an incredible kingdom they have some of and i'm not kidding when i say this some of the most uh savage fighters that i've ever seen in rise of kingdoms just absolutely amazing players in that kingdom there's some other smaller factors that contributed to us leaving uh not just the alliance but the kingdom but again it's it's not worth getting into those smaller details uh, i just wanted to clear up that uh, why i left even though i mentioned that i wasn't going to i didn't mean to leave i didn't intend on leaving but it just turned out to be the case that the players that i migrated with originally were leaving and so i feel like i i, I should follow suit with that being said guys if you enjoyed the video make sure you drop a thumbs up on it it does help out the channel way more than you think comment down below any questions you have about julius caesar and subscribe to the channel click the bell to be notified the next time that i upload a rise of kingdoms video as always all my social media links are in the description below as well as my discord and my twitch where i do tend to stream rise of kingdoms at least once a week finally there's a link in the description to download rise of kingdoms for free for your pc or your mac that is how i play rise of kingdoms most of the time because i experience fewer crashes and less lag and it's just my favorite way to play this game so i encourage you guys to give it a shot it's free link is in the description below to download rise of kingdoms with blue stacks and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace